Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers Revell Classics Series Russian spacecraft Vostok 1. It's a 124 scale kit, number 00024 in the catalog. Now, this was uh, released in 2011, and although the kit's no longer in production, you can still find it at online auctions and garage sales. Uh, it's a Revell of Germany boxing, and uh, 1969 was the uh, original release, but a skill level 2 kit for the intermediate builder. Uh, if you're a detail-minded uh, builder, we've got a treat for you as we use some advanced techniques on this uh, basic kit. Now, it consists of 55 pieces molded in gray and a clear display stand, and includes a two-piece pilot figure with a clear visor some water slide decals, and some instructions that are fairly easy to follow. When you're done, it'll be about 14 inches long and 4 and a quarter inches in diameter. Here is the contents of the kit, and as you can see, there's three trees of basic pieces, a small sheet of decals, and uh, a bag with some clear pieces in it. Now, we're going to use uh, Model Master liquid cement for most construction, but occasionally we'll use super glue and where we do have clear parts, uh, uh, white or crystal clear uh, is what we'll use. Please remember to follow any of the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines uh, when you see or hear of any uh, products used in the review. Now what you see here are the three pieces that are used to uh, make up the cockpit. And uh, as I've mentioned, uh, there's going to be a lot of extra detail uh, added to this model because uh, as I look at this, there's uh, quite a bit missing. So we'll be doing some scratch building to uh, make this more uh, authentic looking. And I'll show you how to modify those parts. But here you see that um, the tube halves uh, and a small window is used, uh, supposed to be the uh, VZOR viewing system. Okay. Now the ledges on each side of the tube uh, is for the ejection seat and this allows uh, for the seat to be removed. The control panel is molded into the left half of the tube. So I went ahead and glued the tube together and then I cut the tube in half and cleaned up the seams with some squadron putty and the ejection seat tracks are removed and some styrene will be added to fill the void. Using some internet uh, sourced pictures, um, I built the ejection seat guide system out of some evergreen 15,000th thick sheet styrene. Uh, now that's item 9015 in their catalog and starting with the thin cardboard I cut pieces, uh, bent them to shape and taped them together forming the basic seat track. I then transferred them to a styrene sheet and drew evenly spaced lines on the glued up support and it gave me a guide for the light lightning holes that are uh, made to lighten the unit. I added small lightning holes with a 76 drill and then the large holes with a drafting compass and a sharp blade attached. The tracks were made from evergreen quarter inch channel that's number 267 in their catalog and I used some liquid cement to glue all these pieces together. When the glue was dry I completed the ejection seat track with a transfer tube and some wiring. And before painting, I applied several lines of rivets using the Archer Fine Transfers. Now these are easily applied decals and they have different size rivets and spacing that can be placed wherever you need them. After the rivets dried overnight, I applied a coat of uh, Tamiya Primer to seal the rivets and check for imperfections. And after I was happy with cleanup, I applied some Alclad paints starting with gloss black base and followed by some chrome. Now the wire plugs were painted well with some Testor's acrylic flat black. I scratch built the right and left cockpit sides from uh, evergreen 15,000th uh, sheet styrene and then I started again with a thin cardboard to cut the shape and make sure everything fit within the Sherrick sphere. I then transferred everything to sheet styrene and glued the pieces together. The actual cockpit was lined with an insulation, so I found some textured paper at the craft store and then I, using a paper template from the styrene parts, I cut the insulation covers and glued them on with some contact cement. I left the area where the two storage cabinets are located um, uncovered and I'll add the doors after the insulation is painted and I'll also line the insides of the Sherrick sphere with this paper. It's uh, from the paper company. It's item number 20609. 
003U and uh, it made a perfect uh, complement to the kit. Here you see I've painted the uh, sides with what was uh, called a testers uh, acryl uh, ray dome tan. I also painted the inside of each Sherrick sphere uh, as you can see from the red arrow. I cut these shapes uh, for the control panels out of styrene sheet and I laminated them until it was just over an eighth inch thick. I found a couple of good pictures on the internet used to make the images and then I uh, printed them out uh, you know, onto some dec some uh, paper and reduced them to 124 scale by trial and error. I then printed them out and transferred them to each panel accordingly and then I added some switches using 15 thousandths solder and some knobs from various styrene rods that were just sectioned and painted flat black. The uh, VZOR is a system that's used for re-entry and I think that the horizon was placed in the center and held there for guidance. Um, now this is made from evergreen 3 8 inch tubing number 232 and I turned the inside of the tube uh, on a lathe actually so that I could use the kit lens and also the window that is supposed to go into the cockpit tube. Uh, I, I painted the inside of the tube with gloss black and then added some um, metal foil uh, to the outside of the tube and glued the clear parts on with some crystal clear. You can see here the left panel is glued into position using some thick super glue and I glued the control panel on with crystal clear and in this picture you can see the two cameras that I made from scrap styrene and an eighth inch evergreen green tube uh, and that again number 224 and I painted it flat black with some micro crystal clear to create the lens. The right panel doors uh, were completed with some evergreen 15,000 sheet stock and the control handle radio relief tube were all made from various bits of evergreen rods, tubes and sheets. The uh, reinforcement X on each door was made by just drawing an X then drilling a number 76 hole at the end of each line and cutting between each tangent of the drilled holes forming the X opening. The three doors were glued into a piece of uh, five thousandths uh, thick stock uh, and then the uh, entire subassembly was glued onto the bulkhead and the small door with the raised X was made by cutting some pieces of styrene from sheet stock and the, formed the X and then glued on uh, that, those pieces with some liquid cement. Now the knob and hinge were made from just some scrap styrene bits as well. Now that everything had dried on the ejection seat, it was glued into position using some crystal clear and the round object, which is the red arrow there, um, in the door is a holding fixture to keep the spear from rolling uh, around during the build and the white styrene in the bottom of the picture, the blue arrow, is a support for the right hand bulkhead. And now you can see the view uh, inside the access door of the Sherrick sphere to the left of the panel and the VZOR hole and you can also see part of the control system over the uh, VZR hole and the cameras. And so here is the view looking down across the uh, door and down and the right panel is glued in with some thick super glue. I also added a cover, that's the red arrow, that um, to the top of the Sherrick sphere and at this point the Sherrick sphere is ready to be closed up. So the base pieces shown here are for the ejection seat and they're not too bad but there's a lot of details that were um, easy to remedy. They were only molded in the 60s so that's all the technology they had. I started the seat by gluing together for the per kit instructions and then I added some various details for the roller system, the parachute, the rocket clamps from various shapes and sizes of styrene and the black patches are styrene shaped and they're painted to emulate access panels. I applied several lines of rivets and access panels using those archer fine transfers as I did to the rail system and you can see these in the uh, photo. I made some rockets for the ejector seat uh, by turning some pieces on my lathe uh, starting with some eighth inch rod but you could shape these uh, with a file if needed and the engine nacelles were cut off the warheads of the missiles uh, from my spare part stock and these were glued together and painted using some gloss black. Here is the completed ejection seat and I painted uh, the unit with alclad aluminum 
after a base coat of gloss black was applied and allowed to dry overnight and the ejection mechanism was made from various scrap parts I had laying around. As you can see uh, the padding is uh, Tamiya tape and it's uh, cut to shape. On the back side of it uh, the wiring for the rockets is 15,000 solder, solder painted with some flat white and then the um, electrical plugs are 80 thousandths rod from Evergreen that's number 212 painted flat black. Now they're lined up with the plugs on the ejector seat rail system when they're finished and installed and the parachute is wetted out paper stuffed into the cavity and allowed to dry. This kit is kind of unique because you can remove the ejection seat for display uh, but to have uh, to do that properly I needed a stand for it so um, I found a picture on the internet of the actual seat sitting on a rack and it kind of looks like this so I made one out of 16th inch brass rod soldered and then painted aluminum. Here are the pieces for the cosmonaut figure uh, Yuri Gagarin and it's really nice. Um, the two pieces in the front and the back halves and then there's a clear helmet uh, face mask. So after gluing the two halves together with liquid cement I removed the parting lines you know and then I smoothed out all the glue lines and seams and then I applied a coat of Temya primer. The primer had dried I painted the entire spacesuit with some Testers Acryl International Orange and the gloves and boots were enamel leather color. I painted the face with some enamel flesh color and the eyes were painted flat white and the inside of the helmet with a mixture of flat whites and a touch of yellow uh, and then the seat belts were painted with uh, some acrylic uh, medium gray with the center being a leather color paint the helmet uh, in gloss white and then allow it to dry and apply the, uh, the the decal, the CCCP decal. And then paint the zipper oxygen respirator microphones flat black. And the face mask was dipped into some uh, future floor polish, now pledge, and allowed to dry overnight. Uh, and I used some crystal clear to install it. Then the entire cosmonaut was washed with some black, gray, and white uh, watercolors allowed to dry and rubbed off to bring out the highlights of the uh, clothing. So here is the uh, pilot figure, cosmonaut figure, sitting in the ejection seat on the display stand. Um, and of course this is for display purposes only. We'll begin to work on the rest of the uh, rocket and uh, this is uh, the parts that make up the instrument section located below the Sherrick sphere. And they did a nice job showing some detail. Unfortunately uh, it's almost all flat due to the molding capabilities uh, at the time and the electrical channel is too small. So I'll take care of this by removing uh, the raised parts and replacing them with scratch built parts. The oxygen tanks are too small and should be uh, angled perpendicular to the surface so we'll fix that as well. And thanks to the internet the pictures are everywhere so I'll be able to update all the components. So using all the pictures that obviously didn't uh, uh, weren't around in 1969 when this kit was made, I started uh, taking a note of where all the raised elements were, and then I removed all the raised features, filling in the groove where the oxygen tanks would locate, and also where the Sherrick sphere would be attached. And mine won't be removable, however. I made a larger uh, electrical ring out of uh, some evergreen 15,000 sheet styrene. And then I glued into place uh, the pieces with some liquid cement. I had to use some product uh, from Squadron, their putty, to fill several areas before priming them. I constructed a lower rocket housing out of wood and I turned that on my lathe to fit. I drilled a 3 8 inch hole through this to allow for the clear rod to support the spaceship during display. And then I glued a block of wood in with some slow uh, drying epoxy and drilled a 3 8 inch hole through the center for the 3 8 inch rod. As I had mentioned the oxygen tanks were too small and didn't sit right so I bought a bag of 16.0 millimeter round beads from the craft store. Uh, these were made by Craftwood item 9146-62 and each one had a hole through the center that I had to fill with some Bondo. Now each bead was then drilled with a small hole and a short piece of brass wire glued in. And then each bead was sanded round and sealed with several coats of urethane coating, uh, followed by some primer. And then the uh, panel on the spacecraft was marked evenly for the tanks. 
The lower half of the instrument compartment is occupied with cooling plates and lines. And I made the lines from 20 by 60 thousandth strips uh, from Evergreen, that's number 123, and glued them to the walls using some liquid cement. The vertical supports are spaced every 45 degrees, and after everything had dried, I gave it a nice coat of Tamiya primer. I painted the entire instrument compartment then, and from left to right, the engine nacelle was painted with some uh, in testers enamel uh, field green, and then the cooling panel with some testers acrylic flat white, and the locking ring to the third stage with some alclad chrome. The instrument section with the field green and the upper area for the oxygen tanks was painted with alclad chrome as well. So here are two of the pieces, there's 50 or 60, that make up the instrument sections and quite frankly I just did the best I could with evergreen bits uh, and pieces and put them together uh, to make up the, all of the various things that I saw on photographs on that section. So everything was scratch built from 15 thousandths sheets styrene and then the other various shapes and sizes were just small pieces of evergreen stock. The instruments were painted then with clad chrome and the plugs were all painted flat black. I made the cooling panels from uh, evergreen 15 thousandth stock again and the ribs on the panels are pieces of uh, 20 by 40 thousandths uh, strip stock. That's number 122 in the evergreen catalog and they were primed with Tamiya primer uh, followed by some alclad chrome. The lower control rocket nacelles were turned on my lathe and painted with some alclad titanium. The oval shaped antennas are brass rods bent to shape and soldered together. Now they're on a pivot so that they can fold into the third stage if I want to display it that way. The small electrical wire was made from 15,000 solder painted ray dome tan and the large wire made from evergreen 40 thousandths rod number 211. Now paint the, I painted that ray dome tan as well and the three long antenna are made from evergreen 40 thousandths rod item 211 and painted alclad aluminum. And these are removable to fit into stage 3. Moving on, I glued all of the instruments with some crystal clear on and then started wiring them. All the wire is 15 thousandths solder which is painted with radome tan and bent and uh, cut to shape. And the tubing is also made from the same thing, bent and cut to shape um, and for length. The oxygen tank lines are made from the same thing, 15 thousandth solder. And the tie down straps that secure the tanks are some metal foil cut into strips and applied to the tanks. You can see the brass wire poking through the inside of the model. So when I was happy, um, then I used some thick super glue to secure that into position. And the base, uh, of, based on the reference pictures that I found, the blue tank is the reserve oxygen tank and I think uh, the pad with four holes is for a removable antenna. Here are some other views um, at quarter sections around to give you an idea of all of the instruments and wiring that was done. Uh, so you can take a look at what I've done here and replicate them uh, as, as I did or just use your references to try and uh, Piece this together the best you can for authenticity compared to the real thing. Uh, but um, if you take your time, uh, you'll find that uh, it's rewarding and it's really a gorgeous looking model even though uh, it started out as just a basic small uh, part count kit. To align the VZOR hole, um, I had to um, place that rod in position and these are the two halves of the sphere that are placed together uh, during the alignment and the access door here uh, is on the right and you can see that of course that's uh, uh, to be added later. The access door did not have a flange or attachment features so I made this out of evergreen um, using some 15 thousandths uh, sheet styrene and after this had dried I placed the door into the opening and carefully drilled the attachment holes and I used these holes to locate the pads on the hatch were there uh, that were made there from uh, evergreen 332nd tube that's item 223 and when these dried they were sanded f flat on the backside to sit flush on the flange that sits on the sphere. 
You can see the small details here uh, that were added to the flange. These were locating pins for the hatch and electrical contacts. And the hatch uh, is fitted so that it uh, fits perfectly into the opening. After painting the hatch opening with some alclad aluminum and completing the cockpit, the sphere is glued together using some liquid cement, and the straps that secure the sphere to the instrument section are then molded into the sphere. Um, unfortunately, they're not wide enough and they're too thick, so I remove the straps on the right, as you see here, and by sanding and grinding and filling, uh, that was some putty to get that into shape the way it should look. After sanding the sphere smoothly with some fine sandpaper and priming with Tamiya primer, I applied the L-clad chrome uh, to the sphere and the hatch. And the hatch was also lined with the insulation material we'd used inside the cockpit. Here are the kit's parts for the third stage, and it's made up of two halves of bottom and four control rockets with no detail for the inside of it. I glued the sides together and the bottom using some liquid cement. And I also glued pieces of styrene to keep the joints aligned, as you can see there, the white blocks. And when this was dried, I glued a block of wood to the bottom using some slow setting epoxy. This will give me a good support for the stand. And once dry, I drilled a 3 8 hole in the center of the stage 3 bottom into the wood. And there's a small hole, and that's a vent, a relief vent allowing air to escape when the rod enters the hole. The inside of the third stage, I really did not have enough information available to accurately replicate it. Um, and so what I did was I, I'll, I used some of the, uh, I created a cone with some evergreen stock, the 15,000 sheet, and added some vertical strips of uh, 40 by 60,000 strip. And this was painted L-clad aluminum. The main stage is shown here, uh, uh, main stage three, with uh, a mixture and was painted with a mixture of um, acrylic light gray and a few drops of field green. And based on research, the uh, spaceship was a light gray in color, but it had a green hint to it, so in different light conditions. And so the center area and the bottom end were painted with chrome, uh, and the antennas were also painted with alclad chrome. And I put some bare metal foil uh, in to round out the access panels. The uh, plumbing on the control rocket was made from brass tubing bent to shape. And the large tubes were wrapped with thread to simulate some insulation. And then they were all painted with uh, acrylic flat white. The lines were glued on using some uh, thick super glue. And simulated clamps were made using some bare metal foil. Now the rocket engine was painted with alclad titanium and the inside was dry brushed with some flat white. So what you see here is the original kit display stand. Uh, but with all the added detail, I had added considerable, a considerable amount of weight. Um, and so it, it wasn't going to work. Um, so I decided early on to use that uh, 3 8 acrylic rod to display the model. And I created an acrylic base made from 1 8 inch sheet uh, acrylic and cut it into a 4 and a half inch diameter pad. Drilled a 3 8 hole in the center for the rod and the rod was cut 4 and a half inches in length. To display the instrument compartment and sphere, I started with an acrylic piece cut to size and drilled a 3 8 inch hole and then heated along the area where I wanted to bend it. This takes a little practice and not enough heat and you don't get a good bend and too much and the part bubbles or catches fire. So after several attempts and lessons, I ended up with a base that works and the 3 8 acrylic rod was also heated and bent around a large soup can. And so uh, it's not perfect, but it's going to work very nicely for my display. So I glued the acrylic pieces together of the display stands with some well done uh, acrylic glue. And I also added a 1 8 inch tube to hold the hatch cover while it was on display. As you can see, everything's coming together. And I glued the Sherrick Spear to the instrument compartment using some crystal clear glue. I made some new straps for the join from evergreen 20,000th by 60,000th strips and painted them with some of the acrylic field green. The center cap was painted with alclad chrome. And these were all glued into place with some crystal clear. 
The hook antennas were bent from brass rod and painted with alclad chrome and glued on with crystal clear as well. The long antennas were glued on with thick super glue and the umbilical and the cable fairing, they weren't the correct size. So both were made from 15,000 sheet styrene and the umbilical was painted with alclad chrome while the fairing was covered with some crumpled bare metal foil then painted with a mixture of acrylic flat white and a drop of brown. Both were then secured to the sphere with some micro crystal clear. So well, there you have it. Your build is complete and you can see the ejection seat here with Yuri Gagarin in place. Now this kit uh, was easily buildable uh, even by a beginner right out of the box. It would make a credible looking uh, rocket. But if you want to add super detailing uh, the sky is the limit, so to speak, and uh, as you can see, I did a great amount of scratch building and detailing here, and how much you do is entirely up to you, but it uh, just goes to show you, you can take a base kit and turn it into a museum quality piece if you really want to spend the time and effort to research it and get out the tools. So, if I were you, I'd buy one and I modify it as much as you like and put it on your shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit build and review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.